Good afternoon. I, thought, I, I hope everybody is doing well this afternoon. Let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 18 and verses 1 through 8. Our text today will be verses 1 through 8. And I'll begin by reading God's Word. The Bible says in verse 1, And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. Let's pray that God will bless this message. Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for your Blessings, thank you for allowing us to um, be here today and be around your word and learn from your word. Now, Lord, I ask you, please bless this message, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There is a magazine cartoon that shows a little boy kneeling um, next to his bed praying. And he says with some measure of disgust, uh, dear Lord, Uncle Jim um, still doesn't have a job. My sister um, still doesn't have a boyfriend. My grandma still feeling pretty sick. And I am tired of praying for this family and not seeing any results. You know, I think that if we're honest, all of us have felt this way um, at some time in our life. You know, we've been praying for something, and it seems like God does not answer our prayer. And many of us are, um, have gotten to the point where we just quit praying. You know, we get tired of praying. We get frustrated. I think that some of us have even stopped praying altogether for some things. The truth of the matter is that there are some things in our life that no matter what we do, we are not going to resolve them. And we need God's help. We need God's intervention. In our story today, this widow finds herself in an impasse with this judge. I mean, she is not getting anywhere with this judge. Um, and Jesus says here that this widow did not give up. She was relentless until she got the results that, that she was after. And so Jesus here teaches us, when it comes to prayer, never give up. That's the message today. Never give up. And he illustrates this principle with a parable, a very interesting parable. And I want us today to look at four truths that this parable teaches us. Four very important truths. Let's begin with the first one. In the first place, it, this is a parable of contrast, not similarities. It's a parable of contrast, not similarities. Um, many of Jesus' parables um, were parables of similarities. He would compare some things um, to, to other things. And many, many of them, for example, there was a man who threw a big banquet, and we know that that man represents God. You know, and so... The many of the parables that Jesus taught were parables of similarities, not this one. This parable is a parable of contrast. 
don't think for a moment that this unjust judge is God. Jesus is not comparing this judge uh, with God. He's not. Uh, for example, the, if you think about it, this widow in, in this parable comes to a judge who sits in a chair of justice. But you and I come to a throne of grace. And there's a big difference between justice and grace. And I think it's important for all of us to um, understand the difference between justice, mercy, and grace. What is justice? Justice is when you get what you deserve, right? When you get what you deserve. You know when you see people on TV uh, protesting, holding signs, holding placards saying, we want justice. What they're saying is that they want the alleged criminal to pay for what he or she has done. They want justice served. And what they mean is they want them to get what they deserve. And we've been seeing a lot of this on TV lately. You know, this, this week it just got worse because of all the things that have taken place. You know, um, people have taken to the streets and they are protesting. And we have riots on the streets and, and we have arson and fires and, and all of this activity uh, that is happening right now that's uh, all over the news right now. And, and what are people saying? People are basically saying that they want uh, these criminals uh, to, to, be, uh, to be charged. You know, uh, they feel that justice has not been served. You know, and so a crime has been committed and people are asking, well, where are the criminal charges? You know, some of these men, you know, the, they're just being let go with just a slap on the, on the wrist. And, and, you know, so people are, are asking, and, and this is their way of saying, you know, uh, what, uh, when are we going to see, you know, these uh, men prosecuted? They want justice, and, and they're holding up signs saying, you know, no justice, no peace. And so, but, but think about it. What they're really saying is that they want these men, these criminals, to get what they deserve. That is the definition of justice. Mercy, on the other hand, is the opposite of justice. Mercy is not getting what you deserve. A pardon is a good example of mercy. You know, um, a, a person may be guilty, and uh, we may have the President of the United States issuing a pardon for this, for this person. Um, everybody knows that this person is guilty, okay? Um, has been charged with um, the crime and has been found guilty, and yet he can still be set free uh, through a pardon, okay? That's, that's mercy, an example of mercy. Um, and that's exactly what happened to us, if you think about it. You know, we were guilty. We, we were sinners. But thank God that God is merciful, amen? And he gave us a pardon, you know, and, and he forgave our sins. And that's why we have salvation. All right, so we have justice. We have mercy. We also have grace. It's important to understand what grace is. What is grace? Grace is when you get what you don't deserve. When you get what you don't deserve. We don't deserve salvation. We don't deserve God's blessings. We don't deserve God's favors. We do not because we're sinners, you know? Guilty as charged, and yet God comes to us, and He is gracious. He gives us salvation, and He gives us blessings. He gives us His protection and His provision. He does that through grace. And so, 
the parable again is a contrast of is, is a parable of contrast rather and not similarities. Okay, the widow here comes to a, ju- a judge who sits in a chair of justice, and but when you and I come, we come to a throne of grace. Now you understand the difference here. And so the point that Jesus is trying to make here is that if the judge who is unjust, if, if, if he agrees to do what the widow is requesting, how much more your heavenly father will give you? Your heavenly father who is not just going to be serving justice, but he is going to be merciful to you and he is going to be gracious to you. You see, that's the point that Jesus is trying to make here. It's a parable of contrast. Another point uh, here is uh, about the widow. Um, Before we go there, Hebrews 4.16 talks to us about uh, the grace of God. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace. There it is. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need, speaking of God's grace and mercy. All right, but now let's let's think about the the widow. Now, this woman was a widow, Jesus says, and by definition, a a widow is a woman who does not have a husband, right? But when you and I come um, and and pray for our needs and we come before the throne of grace, we do not come as a widow. No, we come as a bride, right? Because we are the bride of Christ. And, and listen, our husband is not dead. Our husband is very much alive today. So you see that there's, there's a big difference there. When you, when, when you come to God, you don't come in, in, in the form of a widow. Okay, you come as the bride of Christ. And as the bride of Christ, we have rights. We have a husband that is alive. The Bible talks about this in Ephesians 5 and verse 25, and how we are the bride of Christ. It says, uh, Ephesians 5, 25, Husbands, love your wives. Listen, even as Christ also loved the church, that's you and me today, and gave himself for it. And the Bible says here that Christ loves the church. Okay, verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So there it is. The Bible says very clearly, uh, we are not like the widow. Our husband, if we're the bride, our, our husband or our future husband in this case, uh, he is the groom. He is very much alive, okay? All right, so it's a parable of contrast, not similarities. Number two in my message, uh, it is that it's a, this parable is one that talks about social issues. It's a parable that talks about social issues. The unjust judge in this parable represents corruption. This judge had no fear of God, and couldn't care less what people thought about him. You know, this guy was a picture of corruption. I mean, what that means is that this guy took bribes and he did favors um, to those people that could repay him, those people of of authority and position in society. Um, He didn't care about justice, he didn't care about the law, he didn't care about morality. Jesus says he didn't care about God, and and he really didn't care what people thought about him. This was the kind of guy that that he was. You know, he was just out to fill his pockets. He was just after money, he was ambitious. That's the kind of judge he was. So he represents corruption. Um, He didn't care about the woman. Why? Because the woman was poor, and she could not bribe him. She couldn't pay him the way that other people could pay him. That's why he didn't pay attention to this woman and didn't do uh, what what she wanted. Now, just like this judge, 
we have a lot of corruption in our world today. You know, corruption was a problem then, and corruption is still a problem today. That is not going away anytime soon, okay? So it's a parable that talks about social issues, and the first social issue that I find is corruption, and we see that with this judge. Other, there's two other social issues for, example, issues, for example. The poor widow represents poverty, and also uh, this, poor, this poor widow represents you know, the, the need of women's rights. You know, in um, being a, being poor in the days of Jesus during during this time, being poor was a big problem. I mean, it's it's a problem. It's a big problem now. But think about it. In those days, there were really no social programs whatsoever. I mean, if if you were poor, you were on your own. You know, there was no welfare. In those days, there was no um, medical assistance. There was no Medicare, no Medicaid, none of that stuff. There was no Social Security. Uh, there was no uh, unemployment benefits. Um, you know, no help, no social help uh, from from the government. You know, for, for, so if you're poor, you're basically on your own. You know, and so. That was a big problem. It, it was a social issue, and it still is today. But uh, so again, this parable talks about these social issues. And the other one is the fact that this person here was a woman. You know, uh, and, and being a woman, you know, being poor was a problem. But being a woman uh, was also an issue in those days. Why? Because in those days, women did not have any authority. Women uh, did not have any rights in those days. Um, and so it was, it was very difficult, it was very tough to be a woman in those days. And you know, uh, women have had to fight for their rights down through the ages. And it has been um, a, a struggle. It has been very difficult. For them, Jesus often spoke about the disparities between men and women <clears throat> and between rich and poor. Many women followed Jesus, and it was because Jesus never put them down. You know, uh, uh, Jesus never saw them as inferior. He would often treat them as, as, as equal. And that's why many people followed him. Um, and, and, and many people became um, disciples of Jesus and followers of Jesus because of this. Luke 8 in verse 1 tells us, And it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, speaking of the twelve disciples. But notice verse 2, And certain women which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom went seven devils, and Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, it says there, many other women, which ministered unto him of their substance. So there were a lot of women who followed Jesus, but not only followed, the Bible says here, that they gave of their substance. They, that means that they gave of their resources. Or they helped them financially. They gave, um, they gave money, you know, basically for the ministry of Jesus. And so why is this? Because Jesus never saw women as inferior. You know, he never um, put them down. And so they... Uh, wanted to be around Jesus, and they followed Jesus. And so, again, uh, in, in, in those days, being a woman was very difficult. It's not like today, and not that things are perfect now. They're not. Uh, there could be some improvements. I understand that. But at least, you know, things have gotten better for women, and it's because they, they've had to fight for, for their rights 
um, you know, the, this whole time. But anyways, uh, this parable talks about these social issues. Number three, it's a parable that commands not to give up. It's a parable that commands us not to give up, not to be a quitter. You know, the reason why he gives us this parable that to never give up, you know why? Is because people tend to give up. That's right. We tend to give up uh, on our endeavors in, in general, not just prayer, but everything that we do. Think about it. We just tend to give up too easily. Okay? Uh, the parable talks about you know, not giving up. And so Jesus says, you know, be uh, persistent. When it comes to prayer, don't give up. I mean, here's a widow that would not give up. Uh, the, I mean, this woman here, this widow, would call the judge and, and would um, leave a message, you know, avenge me of my adversary. And she would do this day after day. She would call him up, avenge me of my adversary. And she would... Uh, and then the guy wouldn't answer, you know. And so she would text them, avenge me on my adversary. She would email them, avenge me on my adversary. When he would come out of the office, she, she'd be there, avenge me on my adversary. When, when he would come back to the office in the morning, she would be standing there by the door saying, avenge me on my adversary. Until one day, the judge finally said, all right. All right, I will do what you say. Otherwise, I'm going to have a mental breakdown from all your nagging. All right, and so she was persistent. And so Jesus is teaching us here not to give up. You know, and, and of course, one of the areas where we tend to give up uh, very easily is prayer. You know, somebody might say, oh, man, I'm going to stop praying because God is not answering my prayer. And, and wait a minute, how long have you been praying? Oh, man, I've been praying for, for two entire days. You know, and they think that that's enough. And so Jesus knows that this is a problem. When we see that our prayers are not being answered, we tend to just throw in the towel and just give up. But he says, don't do it. Be persistent. Do not give up. You know, sometimes God does not answer our prayers because we are praying amiss. We may be praying for the wrong thing. You know, um, notice that the um, request of this woman was valid. The cause was just. The cause was right. I mean, sometimes... We may be praying um, for the wrong thing, and that's why God may delay the answer, or may not even answer our prayers, because we're, you know, um, basically pray, praying for the wrong thing. For example, we might say, oh, we might pray rather, God, I don't have any money uh, to make ends meet. Please send me more money, you know, um, or, or you might say, Lord, please give me a raise. Maybe what we should be praying is, Lord, why don't you give me more wisdom to be able to manage what you are already providing? You know, maybe that should be uh, the, the prayer instead of asking for more money. It's amazing sometimes, you know, how we tend to waste the resources that God is already providing. So again, we might be praying for the wrong thing. Um, we might be praying the wrong way. Or like the Bible says, we may be praying amiss. And that's why our prayers are not being answered. You know, we might pray, uh, Lord, I, I hate my boss. I hate my job. Why don't you give me a new, a new job? You know, and so why don't you pray instead that God would give you patience? You know, or that God would work in the heart 
of your boss or your manager, you know, maybe that's a better prayer and you might get that answered uh, sooner than the other one. And so, <clears throat> again, it, this is a parable that commands us. It commands us not to give up. And so Jesus encourages us here to be persistent. But think about it. We have to be persistent, not just in our prayers, but in, in everything that we do. This principle applies to everything. It applies to our goals in life. It applies to our dreams in life. Anything that you want to be, anything that you set out to do in life, uh, the principle is still true. Uh, you know, this matter of persistence is true for whatever you decide to do in life. Think about it. Um, I think that most of us at the beginning of the year came up with some uh, New Year's resolutions. And so I want to ask you today, uh, where are you now? It's, it's already May, and, and we're going to be in June pretty soon, five, six months later. How are you doing with your New Year's resolution? Have you given up on certain things? That's what I mean. I think that many of us um, decide to do things, but after you know a few weeks or maybe a few months, we tend to forget or just plain give up on many things, you know? And so Jesus says, you want things in life, you want success, you want to see results, you want, you want things to happen in your life, be persistent. So the principle is true, not just in prayers, but in everything that we decide to do. Ben Carson said, through hard work, perseverance, and a faith in God, you can live your dreams. And then in the Bible says in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. In Romans 8.31 says, What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? And I love what it says in Romans 8.37, Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And so listen, Jesus says, be persistent, okay? And then Philippians 4.13 says that we can do all things. Why? Because Jesus gives us the strength. He gives us the ability to do it. Don't give up. Romans 8.31 says, hey, God is with us. And if God is with us, who can be against us? Remember, we are more than conquerors. And so don't give up in things that you want to do in life. Jesus says, be persistent. You know, the difference between being a prince and a common person is persistence. Jacob wrestled with the angel of God one day, the Bible says. And he says that he wrestled all night. And Jacob said to the angel of God, I will not let you go until you bless me. The angel of God touched him in his thigh. And from that day, uh, Jacob walked with a limp. But you know what? On that day, God changed the name of Jacob to Israel. Common person. Now he was a prince. So the difference between being a prince, between being a common person and a prince, the difference is persistence. Persistence. So Jesus said here, be persistent. Don't give up in anything, in prayer, in anything that you set out to do. Okay, so the parable uh, is a parable that commands us not to give up. Number four. It's a parable that teaches us about divine justice. A parable that teaches us about divine justice. God will give you justice. The justice that you're looking for He's going to give it to us. We see that in verse 7 in our text, where the Bible says, or Jesus says here, And shall not God avenge his own elect? 
you are the elect, I am the elect. And so God is going to avenge us, it says here, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. In verse 8, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So it's a parable that teaches us about divine justice. You know, if you are a child of God today, God will give you the justice that you're looking for. It's a promise. It's in the Bible. You know, God will defend his chosen people. For example, he gave justice to David and Saul in the Old Testament. Remember what happened between David and Saul? Saul became very jealous of David. And one day he decided to, to kill him, basically. And so David went on the run after that. And he had to hide in caves, you know, because Saul wanted to kill him. Why? David hadn't done anything against Saul. Nothing. And yet Saul wa wanted to kill him because he hated him. All right? And he wanted him dead. He wanted him dead. Um, but there came a day when God gave justice to David. And, and remember also Joseph and, and his brothers? You know, uh, Joseph didn't do anything to his brothers. And what did they do? They uh, threw him in a pit. They ended up selling him into slavery. Well, what had he done? He had done nothing, nothing whatsoever. But one day God gave uh, justice to Joseph, you know, and he exalted him and he made him a prime minister then in Egypt. And, and one day his brothers came begging for food, you know, and, and they had to do that. Um, they, they begged him, you know, they, they were in need. And so God gave justice to Joseph. And so this is a parable that teaches us about divine justice. Have you ever been cheated? Have you ever been mistreated? Have you ever been abused, maligned? God will give you the justice that, you, that you're looking for. Hebrews 10 and verse 30 says, for we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. Folks, that is a promise. You want, are you looking for justice today? God will give you the justice that you're looking for. Okay. Um, by the way, all injustice will be dealt with. Even the injustice that you and I commit. That's right. You know, we always tend to see what others are doing to us, but we seldom see uh, the things that we do to other people. We seldom see the pain that we are causing to other people. Um, the judge in our story, I bet you that he never saw how unjust he was. He never said, oh, I am such a corrupt judge. Oh, I am, you know, I'm just a terrible man. He never said that about himself. No, the guy thought he was perfect. You know, when, when he saw himself in the mirror, he thought he was a, a perfect man. But, hey, God did not see that. God saw the corruption. God saw the injustice. Uh, the, the woman, the widow, saw the injustice. And sometimes we have to be careful with the things that we say and the things that we do because we might be like that judge. Listen, the Bible says that all injustice will be dealt with, even the injustice that you and I commit. So we have to be careful. Okay, Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, dear Lord, for your blessings. Thank you for this parable, dear Lord, that teaches us so much. Thank you, dear Lord. For teaching us today, uh, Lord, not to give up. And, and thank you for the encouragement, dear Lord. And Lord, help us 
to not give up, not, not give up on, on the prayers, dear Lord, that, that, that we need to, 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 to pray and, and help us to be steadfast always, dear Lord, and be persistent, and in our, not only in our prayers, but also in everything that we set out to do, dear Lord. Help us to be persistent. Thank you, dear Lord, for teaching us also that all injustice will be dealt with, dear Lord, and help us just to remember this truth. Lord, I just pray that you would just continue to bless us and help us, dear Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Well, may God bless you this week, and don't forget to be a blessing to someone this week.